state your problem, not your attempted solution. If I'd asked the right question, I might have solved it in a day, not in 12. When you fall down in the gutter, stay there a bit, take a good look around, and you might find 50 bucks. What problem are you trying to solve? Welcome to episode 15 of the Code and Character podcast. I'm Bevan. Ivan, say hi. Oh, hello. I am <laughs> hi. Ivan. I'm host the number two. I'm going to discuss a bit of my experiences with IT challenges, which also act as life challenges about um, trying to solve the right problems, basically what it boils down to this week. Might as well just straight get into it. I've been having a chat to Ivan here talking about that, where because of this podcast, I, I'm the editor for this podcast and I've never really been an editor before. It's something I'm learning and I'm trying to streamline my processes. And a big important part I, want to, I wanted to do was streamline the transcribing of our audio into text. Um, because you see when we run this, whenever I say Drupal, I put a little copy thing up on, as you would have seen in our previous episodes. So I need to be able to locate every location I say Drupal. So I'd love to have it in text so I can search for it. I can take the transcript and put it in ChatGPT and have it do um, a sentiment analysis on that, right? So I really want to be able to get the transcripts and be able to make them because if I edit the video and then, because I want the time code, so if I change the length of the video or chop the front off, the time code's changed. So I wanted a way I could locally just generate those videos. And that's been my end goal, was to be able to locally generate a textual transcription of the audio on the podcast. And so I set myself a goal to resolve that. My existing pipeline was to upload the video to YouTube and wait an hour for it to upload, then wait for it to process, grab the transcriptions, which only came in the format I could copy it out of YouTube and then use that. It did a good job, but I only I then didn't have a proper subtitles format. I couldn't import subtitles into the, my video editor, etc. And so I went, you know, I want to streamline it. It's something I can learn. And I went on a mission to get that set up. I had seen about town on YouTube, a lot of talk recently about open vino plugins for audacity we've spoken about audacity on this channel before it's an open source video uh, open source audio editor i think i've got the page open here give me a second i'll bring that up this is the open vino ai plugins for audacity in the audio editor it gives you some tools so you can do music separation it'll separate your audio tracks like a, a mono or it says it right here, separate a mono or stereo track into individual stems. So you can extract the drums, the bass, the vocals and stuff. Not particularly interested in that. The noise suppression to remove background noise, I'm definitely interested in because there's, what is it, Ivan, that Adobe and um, Adobe has a, a podcasting tool you can use, but there's, yes. it's a paid, paid service and you get so many hours a month. And again, you've got to upload it and wait being able to run that locally would be an absolute boon. Music generation would be fun, but I wasn't interested. But this one, this Whisper transcription, and it uses Whisper CPP to generate a label track containing transcription and translation for a given selection of spoken audio vocals. That's exactly what I wanted. And what you'll find with this, you see it's got Windows build instructions and Linux build instructions. And if you go to Windows. Oh, what? No, no Mac build instructions? No Mac, right, uh... yeah. I haven't really looked into it, but they've basically got, um, well, this is the build instructions. I'm sure they've got a pre-built binary so you can just plug it straight into yeah. Audacity on Windows. If you go to the Linux instructions, where were they here? And then their instructions for Ubuntu. Now I'm not, that will be set up here, Ubuntu 2204. I'm not using Ubuntu, I'm running um, Manjaro. So I'd set myself, the request to get these built and running on Manjaro. Never really built a package before on Manjaro. And so I started going into that realm, wanted to, all learning all about CH roots, which I've been aware of what they are. Never really used a CH root, which is a clean environment. I can build the, the project in two weeks of lots of trial and error, learning, exploring, understanding, solving issues in the build process. When the build went wrong, we're covering that. Uh, daily, I was absolutely dedicated to getting this done. It's like mm -hmm. I've come so far. I kept solving problems one after the other until I was getting really close and starting to go, 
look, I need to put this away because I haven't edited this podcast for two weeks. I'm behind time. I haven't produced any content. I've been so focused on that. And then it was yesterday. I suddenly noticed that whisper thing. I didn't really understand completely what it was and went to investigate and discovered I could just simply install whisper directly onto my computer and run a command line on my on the podcast audio file and generate the subtitles straight out of whisper no audacity no having to build anything just straight easy so you could see there was two weeks of trying to solve a problem that wasn't really the problem i had so it brings us to a very particular thing i learned was the idea of what they call an xy problem i don't know why it's named that way i'm going to share my screen again just because there's a whole website for it the xy problem and that is the xy problem is asking about your attempted solution rather than the actual problem um, and it leads to enormous amounts of wasted time and energy both on the part of people asking for help and on the part of providing for help so this is explicitly really targeted for it people opening issues and asking for support and requests it's kind of the idea that you know um, state your problem not your attempted solution and I went through this process twice. My original problem was going, how do I run Archspawn properly? Because I was having troubles with it. And they directed me to go, that's probably not the right problem. What is it? So then I've gone on to go, hey, how do I how do I build these plugins for Arch? But that's still, in the end, you find that the real problem was how do I transcribe audio with modern tooling on Manjaro, right? And the answer is install Whisper and run it on the command line. And I think there's a really good lesson for everybody here about that XY problem to learn that because even funny enough, though, because what's the phrase I was speaking to Ivan before? Sometimes we can't see the forest for the trees. Mm -hmm. um, we get caught in process. We have an XY problem. And uh, in the natural success curriculum by William Wackard that I get taught, he talks about a concept called outside events which is a similar idea when you start, you, like how your subconscious starts telling you that a particular problem needs to be solved and that's really crucial, like it's an emergency, you have to get it done, but it's off track from your mission, right? And it's mm. distracting you from what your true mission is. And all of those things tie together in my experience for the last two weeks of putting countless hours into trying to solve a problem that ultimately was really simple. And not that I knew to ask the right question. You know, I didn't know to ask how do I install Whisper, but you can see on that, that issue now, the right question is how do I set up audio transcriptions locally on Manjaro was the right question, not how do I fix CH root, how do I install these plugins? And there's a lesson there, right? Whether I necessarily learned this, because I think there's an issue of when, you've, when you're caught in that mode, it's very hard to see the truth. Yeah. You know, I was chasing, it's like, Alice in Wonderland chasing the white rabbit down the hole, you know, like now you're in a rabbit warren of wrong problems. So that's pretty much a summary of my experience in the last two weeks to get to a point of I I was editing last week's podcast today and using Whisper to do the transcription and it worked gloriously. Yeah. <laughs> right. So, I mean, also it's a win in the end because I got my problem solved. I did mm -hmm. win, but then I could have done it. If I'd asked the right question, I might have solved it in a day not in 12. So that's pretty much the story. And that's, as a as a developer, this is something that I'm sure I've experienced before, right? Often when I know that when I'm putting issues up, sometimes it's just, I, I even said it in one of those issues, I don't know what I don't know. I yeah. don't know what I'm asking for. Yes. Right? And I find that a very challenging thing sometimes. It's like, I don't, if, if I knew, if I knew what to ask, I'd ask. And I'm a bit resistant also to um, there was a communication challenge. I am a bit resistant to saying, how do I, because even when Nasty that updated that question and the right question was, how do I do audio transcriptions on Manjaro mm -hmm. with modern tooling? I didn't even know to ask for modern tooling. I mean, yeah. I didn't know what Whisper was. I didn't know. I don't know the state of it. I just, all I knew was that there was plugins for Audacity that did it. You're right. So it's a really interesting Although I was chasing the wrong tail and I know what question to ask now, mm -hmm. I think it's worth a discussion is how do you, how do you go about that, Ivan? Like when you, because it's often issues like that. It's often issues and that's exactly what happens. That's why that, that XY website exists to go mm. state, state what your problem is, not your attempted solution is one way to word it. Well, um, yeah, 
Now, this something this is something that I get a lot, such as um, I can't install Drupal. Toasty. It's like, mm -hmm. okay, and I'm going to ask the same twenty questions beforehand. It's like, okay, what error? Like they they don't they don't even mention you know the error that they're getting or something like that. So. My understand, like this is the first time I've looked at this X Y problem. Um, maybe I have seen. Yeah, it I I vaguely think it's come across my realm before, but yeah, it's never yeah, consciously yeah. entered my. But because it got mentioned twice and it was explicitly exactly what I was doing, I was like, well, and I made that connection to those mm. other cliches like you can't see the forest for the trees. Yeah, um, you get caught up in the process, and particularly Williams outside events concept. I'm like, I'm struck by how that's the same thing. This X Y problem. Um, which is looks like an IT centric phrase is very related to what they teach in personal development about you know, focus on your goal. It may even the Bible talks about keep your eye on the prize, right? Yeah, um, yeah, absolutely. So, yeah, so so I don't know if you kind of it's similar to what I kind of struggle with when I try and help people online when I get you know ambiguous questions like that. How do I install this? How do I do that? The other thing which can also speed up help when you're asking, when you're, when you're looking for help is mentioning what you have done because if, and, and this is something that I've noticed whenever you do chats with colleagues and things like that, they might say something random like, okay, I, I can't install, well, no, no, no. I can't log into a website. Okay, well, that can be a lot of things. But if you mention that, but if you were to say, look, I can't log into the website. I've tried I've tried this, this Drush command. I've tried this command. I've tried this user account. I've tried this, this, and this. Then it makes, it makes the life of the person that's trying to help you just straight away. It's like, okay, this person's at this point by yeah. not, you know, spending too much time going through the basics because you kind of, have to always go through the same set. Have you done a Drush CR, you know, Drush ULI, this and that? Often I get people to do those things anyway. It's like, I know you're telling me you did them. Can you just humor me and do them again? Partly from my point, because then yeah. I know, for like, I want to see you do it, because then I know it's done. And you might be telling me, do you clear in the cache, but did you use the same command I'd use? Like, did you clear the case in the same way? True. Right. Uh, is there an error? Op uh, is there an error popping up that I that you didn't see? But it also depends on what what medium you're using to talk. So if it is yes. chat, it's different. If it is screen share, oh, absolutely. If I'm screen sharing with someone and they're struggling, and I've worked with developers that may be a little bit opinionated and slightly shall we say yeah. arrogant where they're like this one that I can think of was mostly arrogant um, <laughs> where you, where you would ask them, have you done this? It's like, of course I've done it. And it's like, okay, okay yeah. humor me. Let's step through it. Step by I love step. That phrase. Humor me. Yeah. But the thing is though, sometimes you need to start from the beginning. It's like, I need to get an understanding of what the problem is. Let's start from the beginning. Okay. Do this. Yes. Okay. You know, all right, run this command. And then so many times we get to like the second command and they're like, oh, 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 here's the problem. It's like, oh, <laughs> yes, it is. There you go. There's a problem. Done. All right. Do you need See, it? I think that no. I think it's lovely to hold someone's hand sometimes. Oh, I it's think fine. There's like, a I'm, bit of a culture in IT sometimes. I like, well, shouldn't have to hold your hand. And it's like, yeah, but there's magic in that, right? Sometimes you just take someone's hand and you hold the hand to it. And exactly what you said just happens. They, I know I've been through it where you similar thing where you're spending days going around and around yeah. and around oh. and finally when someone's got the patience to sit down and walk through it you go so this happens and then don't worry thank you right it's, yeah absolutely it's, i just saw it and that, um and and you know i can think of right now like i'm like the current project i'm working on is a new project it's not drupal Toasty. totally different language and tomorrow morning i'm going to put my hand up and say I'm stuck. I have no idea how to yeah. progress. What language are you? Talk, what language are you using? Well, this is a this is an uh, oldish Angular site, right? Um, so JavaScript, so, <laughs> yeah, Angular. Like, and it's not because Angular is difficult. It's just the way it's being set up. And and you know, tomorrow I'm going to start first thing in the morning. It's like I have now reached a point where it's like I'm 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 stuck. I'm not going to 
you know, let ego get in the way. I'm just going to say, it's like, can you help me with this ticket? Where do I even start? And the way I'm going to frame it is, look, I need to work on this because we do have a, a few people who've worked on a project previously. And um, I'm going to say, where do I even start? Like, like, just send me in the right direction. Yeah. Um, because I kind of need that, like, just because I'm, I'm just jumping into a project. I have no idea what dependencies they're using. I found out that the state management that this project is using is totally different to normal Angular. So you look at the Angular documentation, it's totally different. To go onto a project where you don't know the particular domain, yeah. how would you call it, the, the domain stuff about that particular project. Yes. Like how did you architect it? What exactly. technologies did you put into it? How Plus, are states managed? How are, like, like, you know, all these things. Yeah, and do I even know those technologies? Do I have to learn? And that's that's a very hard thing on a team sometimes. Mm. And that ends you up in exactly what we're talking about. I don't even, like, I can imagine being in that situation. Yeah. I don't even know what to ask. Can someone yeah, exactly. point me in the right direction? Exactly. But however, I do want to find, I've very rarely been on a team where somebody's, able to do, like i don't i maybe it's my experience most of the it teams i've worked on we tend to be in crisis mode all the time <laughs> right everything's behind it's always late it's always yeah. running along and then so you ask for help and especially nowadays with remote work you're on slack you put a message in slack you go oh i'll be patient an hour later you're like hello <laughs> um so it's one of the challenges i find is that will happen so you sit there you put in a request for help mm -hmm. and nothing there's no response so you keep working through it and then you realize that well you've got way more information now here's some more so you send that information and then there's no response and then you keep working you find more information by the time they come and read it you've got three pages of stuff and they don't read it and they're like and then they're overwhelmed i find that a real hard challenge in it teams to go well Hey, look! If you'd responded, if you'd responded when I asked for help, you, you know, you, there wouldn't be three hours yeah. worth of updates, right? Um, while well, I've been scrambling on my own trying to figure something out, um, I, f I find that a challenge because a lot of the advice you're giving right now, I go, well, I've tried those things, but then, you know, that's exactly when you go tell them what you've done. I I know I've had the feedback for. Um, that's way too much information. It's overwhelming. So don't give me so much information, right? It's kind of um, it's an interesting challenge. Trying to this is a communication question that comes up a lot. Oh yeah. Um, you know, how do you communicate with people? I think there's definitely something to be said about patience, but that's why I think the XY problem is an interesting thing. I'm in the nice position at the moment where I'm working working for myself, working on my own thing. I am on my own. Right. And mind you, I've got to say, um, Manjaro gets a bad rap sometimes, but that forum, I even updated and said they're the most helpful people I've ever had on anything. Like they were patient, they were understanding, they were answering questions, like without being judgmental. Yeah. You know, they, especially in the open source world, you hear a lot that about especially Linux people can be quite arrogant, as you said, and go, oh, <laughs> right. Um, I found them really, really helpful, which was great. Um, you know, and I didn't always understand that some um, didn't always understand what they're saying. Right? That's for example, one of them says um, use Manjaro ch root, and I'm looking for a command called Manjaro ch root. I'm like, there's, I can't find any such command. But it wasn't a command; it was a package of tools. Yeah. Right, and it's like, of course, I didn't. Again, of course, I didn't know. Like, it's kind of I didn't. There's, there's a. Um, it's interesting. And just, yeah, being so new to Manjaro, when you say something like that, you go, just, yeah, you get flippant comments like that when some people can just throw out an answer like, just use Manjaro CH root. And you're like, great, what's that? Where do I get it from? Where do I even exactly. look? Exactly. Right? Um, that's, that's, I've had that before too, where you just get a flippant, just do this. And you're like, just do what? <laughs> yeah. Um, those are words. Like, that's. <laughs> <laughs> just um, use that yeah. it's like what well uh, yeah you know i might say oh just run drush cr and somebody's like drush what's drush what's yeah, exactly. yeah 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 drush. which like what what is that see, it's an interesting especially if there's any newbies watching that's something you're gonna that you do sort of need to deal with and you've got to be i think we've said it before 
you've got to ask. And if someone's being an ass, then mm. well, what do you do? <laughs> like that's um, um, there's a message for both people. Like if you're if you're new and you're a junior and you don't know, because like we're both experienced and we still mm. get this. Because you're always new. Doesn't matter how much you know. Like you said, you're going on a. You got to come in tomorrow and ask. Yeah. Point me in the right direction. I don't know. Right. Yeah. Because there's always some tech you don't know, and um, so there's a message for anybody asking for support on how to approach that support and ask the right questions. Like this is the problem I'm trying to solve. Of course, that's such a big lesson for me. Is because all all I had to do in that issue of mine was just write at the top. I am trying to get transcriptions working on Manjaro. This is what I've tried. Mm -hmm. Just that little bit difference because I'm very explicit. Um, I wrote out a very long, gave my system information, all the steps I'd done, the whole lot, but I never mentioned what my end goal was. Such a big lesson in what was my end result I was after. Um, mm -hmm. You know. Yeah. Um, Absolutely. And that's I've had other people before when you ask for help go, why don't you just do such and such? And you go, of course, I don't know what I don't what like because I know what this is that I'm working on over here. You just told me, why don't you do bing bomb doom doom? And you go, Well, I don't what what? Like that's um I've had that help before as well. And so I'm not doing that because I I I get lost. Um so it's very when you're giving people support, having patience is a is a good thing. But interesting interesting yes. scenario it's hard to navigate these i think it's a very good life lesson this one too though that particularly you know state what your end goal is mm. oh yeah absolutely um, you know um you probably learn that in well, let's say you probably i've heard similar things in sales training and stuff like customer service you get a customer coming and go i want a refund now you can you generally dissociate them you go okay sure i'll give you a refund what's what do you want to you know and then they ask yeah. those questions like what what was the you know sure you can have a refund but may i ask what the problem was because often you find out that giving them a refund is not the right solution it's not gonna you go oh you had the wrong one i can give you the right one and you and they're people often happier with that result uh it's probably a good thing to uh, say when you're offering help and support go step back what are you actually trying to achieve here mm -hmm. i'm sure people have asked me that in my in my career too We'll come for help and have people go what is it you're trying to achieve absolutely um, that's been my, my journey i got there it wasn't a complete loss right i learned a lot mm. i did learn about ch Rich environments i learned how to write a package build script for manjaro and put something in the AUR. aur i learned how to talk to aur's rest endpoint and get information about a package i learned how the dependency managers work in how valuable that information is to me is just a matter of whether I extract it because I don't have any particular packages I need to build. Yeah. Yet also going through all that challenge myself, I, I had trouble finding the information, right? And so now that information's in my head. And so I'm definitely thinking about sitting down and writing a tutorial on how to build a package locally on your own machine um, or at least point people in the right directions. Because even since then, I've watched a video where someone pointed to an arch thing about how to build packages now in all my searching i didn't find that right that's often you and i are both creating content mm -hmm. there's another lesson about mining that like hey look i was off track i heard this story years ago it's like a lot of people go when you when you fall down in the gutter get up dust yourself off and get going and i heard a smart man once told me he says don't do that when you fall down in the gutter stay there a bit take a good look around and you might find 50 bucks. <laughs> <laughs> and, and I think there's value in that though, right? That's I, I did go off track. I was off the beaten path. I was going yep. the wrong way, but there's still treasure to be found. Might as well not count it as a waste, right? That's kind of no. trying to extract the, extract the learning experience. And here we're making this episode now, right? There's... I was going to say that. Exactly. You made <laughs> yeah. it. Got an episode ID and you're going to probably get a video yep. out of it as well. Don't beat yourself up either because that's, yeah. you know, I, I was struggling with that. I really wanted to, like, at one hand, I was elated that I found my solution and I was also devastated that it was so easy and it took me so long to find what seemed blatantly obvious. I was proud of myself for the dedication and the persistence to get through it and finally find the solution. I was down on myself for being stupid. <laughs> Yeah, you know, it's a weird experience. And then so you got to take the best out of it, preaching positive thinking a bit, but it's not really positive thinking. But the truth is, it wasn't a waste of time. 
yeah. might have not been the most efficient use of my time. But also the reality is that time's gone now. The past is in the past. I've got to make the best use of what I've got. And the truth is I did pick up resources. I've learned. I've got experience. I've mm. learned more tools. And I can give that back, right? It's just like the hero's journey. The hero's journey follows that exact thing. Here I was in obscurity, not knowing what I was doing, went on a journey, met some challenges, fought the dragon, realised the dragon wasn't my enemy after all, came back home, realised my treasure was right there back where I started. <laughs> okay. I learned about that XY problem, right? That's yeah. a big, big boon. And that's uh, yet another thing I can make content about, right? So Absolutely. the XY problem and how right. it relates to, because I was talking about William Whitecloud's outside mm-hmm. events. Yeah. Here's this XY problem, which is an IT based thing because it literally talks about stating your problem, not the solution, which is at least an engineering concept. I've not really heard of. I want to look, read up more about it. This other concept of outside events where you, mm-hmm. there's it's a story I heard of a guy. He wanted to build like a new ergonomic, environmentally friendly house. He's up here in Byron Bay and went to the council to put his, the what do you call it, a development approval process and they rejected it. He went and put it in a few times and they rejected it and rejected it. And he got upset about that and started doing some research into some of the councillors, found out some of the councillors were a bit, took their money in their back pocket. They weren't completely above board, met some other people who were having problems, joined them, started working with those people to uncover corruption in the government and ended up on Today Tonight doing, you know, like just in all these things. And then it all come into a big head. And then one day he was speaking to his mentor and he like brought him the big stack of paper and said, what is think about it. What should I do with it? And the guy's just gone, what problem are you trying to solve? It's the same the XY problem, right? Yeah. What problem are you trying to solve? And he's kind of having been trained, he's just looked at it and gone, well, I wanted to get my development proposal approved and build that ergonomic house. And he goes, well, go do that then. Um, and the story goes, the guy went home to his wife, um, said he, he was given up that fight um, and his wife put on a nice dress, you know, got a cleavage out, went down to the council chambers the next day, walked in there and said, our, this is our development proposal that got rejected. What do we need to do to get it passed? And they go, well, you just got to do this, this, this. They went home, got that done. Within a month, they had their thing approved, right? Such a similar story, though, right, in a completely different environment. But yeah. for me to have that same experience of chasing the wrong thing, right, it's kind of, I mean, my, of course, I've, I've got focused on no matter what I do, I'm going to get these plugins built. No yeah. matter what I do, I'm going to get these plugins, These I've got to get this Audacity build process built. And that wasn't the goal. The goal was to get audio transcriptions working. And it's so easy to get lost. Um, and I like how I like how the connection between that X-Wave problem and that outside event, because that story is the one I heard about how to explain outside events. The guy was chasing governmental corruption instead of getting his development proposal through mm. um, similar thing yes. and how it happens on just a different level right here i was just dealing with an it issue and he's mm. dealing with much larger um, but the exact same um, and i find that really fascinating to, to see the two different the, the same principle explained two different ways yes from two different aspects um, and they're the same thing that's that's my story of my two weeks of doing IT shit fuckery. <laughs> there you go. There you so, go. So right. Well let's just wrap it up. up for this episode. Yeah. All right. done. That was my story. Cheers. See you later. See you next week. Right, bye bye.